Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Imagine that you are standing there on that mountain with the disciples and seeing all of this take place. You see Christ's appearance altered and his clothing made so white that they dazzled in such a way that nobody could have colored it so. Then you see two men standing with Christ, one on either side, and you recognize them as Moses and Elijah. When you think about this, you start to wonder, why is it Moses and Elijah and not King David or Abraham? Well, it's because Moses is known as the giver of the law, and Elijah is one of the great prophets. When Moses went up to God on Mount Sinai, he received the law and brought it down to the people of Israel. God told Moses to tell the people that the law should be kept perfectly, otherwise they would be condemned to Sheol. Do we ever think that we can pick and choose which of God's teachings and which of God's commands we can follow and which ones we can just toss out? Most of us probably do not do this actively. But when we sin, this is essentially what we are doing. Do we ever just shut our ears to the teaching of Christ, or possibly choose to avoid recalling a certain commandment? Maybe we think that if we close our door, that what we do behind it is hidden. Since our thoughts are in our mind, Maybe we think that it's not heard. Or maybe, just maybe, we know something is wrong, but we do it anyway, just because we want to. If we disregard his teachings or disobey his commandments, then we do not keep the law perfectly. If we do not keep the law perfectly, then we are condemned to Sheol. The closing of our ears to the commandments and teachings of God is our disobeying sinful nature. It feels good to us because we get the things that seem better to us, better than God can give, or at least that's what we think. We focus on the here and now, what feels good right now, what would make us happy right now. That is our sinful state. That is who we are. But when we disobey God's law just so we can have something now, or just so we can do that one thing we want to do, we confess that Christ's teachings and God's commands are not good for us, nor what we believe. Not only does this pull us away from God, it pulls us away from His house, the church as a whole. This means, then, that we are not obeying our Heavenly Father's command to listen to Christ's teachings, as he says in verse 35. We don't want to be deprived of something that would make life so much better for us, or so we think. And that was probably what Peter was thinking when he offered to make the tents. He sees Christ in all his glory but doesn't want to go back down the mountain. He wants to stay up on the mountaintop with Christ, Moses, and Elijah. But Christ's mission isn't to stay up on that mountain. And that is why St. Luke says that Peter didn't know what he was saying. Christ's mission on this earth was exactly how Elijah and indeed all the prophets foretold. His mission was the salvation of the world, And this meant that he would suffer and die on the cross. Elijah and Moses, the prophets and the law, all point towards one person, a man who would save the world from sin, a Messiah, a Savior. That is exactly what Moses and Elijah are doing on the mountain with Christ. They are pointing to him as the Messiah. Through Christ, God accomplishes the plan for your salvation. It wasn't something that he thought about after the fall, but was something that he had planned since before creation. In his gracious love for you, 
God sent His only Son, whom we see in His full glory, in His transfiguration, to take up the cross as an innocent person. This is what Moses and Elijah were talking about with Christ. Luke doesn't say much beyond giving us the topic, but it's possible that they spoke of how it was going to happen. Christ departs from the world by way of one of the most brutal execution styles in history, crucifixion. Christ gives his life on the cross for the forgiveness of your sins. You and he are totally different people. You are sinful. He is perfect. You are just flesh. He is God in the flesh. You are guilty. He is innocent. And this is what Christ revealed to Peter, James, and John on the mountain. And yet, Christ still goes to the cross for you. When you do not listen to his teachings, nor obey his commands, you are forgiven. You receive the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life with God through your baptism into Christ's death and resurrection. In your baptism, Christ gives you his life, one that he spent living out God's commands and his teachings. This is now your life. God now sees you as one who listens to Christ's teachings and obeys his commandments. You are holy and perfect because of this gift that was purchased with the holy and precious blood of Christ on the cross. When you go to heaven, you will see Christ with the holes in his hands and feet and the stab wound where the spear pierced his flesh. You will see him in all his glory, his face glowing and his clothing dazzlingly white, looking as he did on the Mount of Transfiguration. Today we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord. We heard how Christ was transfigured before the disciples Peter, James, and John. How we saw Moses and Elijah standing with Christ, representing the law and the prophets, both pointing to Christ as the one who would keep the law perfectly and would fulfill all of the Old Testament prophecies. And for us, living here today, he has. While we do not keep the law perfectly, you have one who has kept it and has given that life to you as your own. And how he gave his life on the cross for your forgiveness, that through your baptism into his death and resurrection, you would receive eternal life with him. In this great exchange, you are now seen by God as having followed and listened to all Christ's commands and teachings. For as we see Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, we will surely see him in that way again in all his glory in heaven. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, may God bless us with his grace, peace, and love, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.